reality <clears throat> that's my dad that's my dad how y'all doing today how y'all doing welcome <laughs> yes 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 i am bbt and you could ask me anything I had to jump back on here i was at the gym working on my shoulders today and then i started listening to this youtube and i was like oh man i gotta play this on my channel and i need to react to this because this message is powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. So without any further ado, I want to play it. And then I want to just add my commentary after the fact. All right, here we go. Greetings to you. I am Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I am speaking this morning to you on behalf of my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I am sure that my teacher who is presently on the wheel. These unidentified by others, flying objects that are present in this world to bring about the judgment of God. I am sure my teacher is deeply concerned about what is happening in black America today that is put to of our young men one a great basketball player Kyrie Irving and another brother who is called a rapper, but he's so much more than that. Uh, Brother Ye, and the controversy that is swirling around these two men that is causing, unfortunately, division among a people that can least afford to be broken more apart because of misunderstanding and unfortunately parts of ignorance that we don't see the enemy who is working 100% to bring bloodshed about among us because of the serious nature of what is happening that is causing them, the enemy, to use his influence on those of us who are on his payroll and those of us who have been blessed to be connected to them could be a blessing, but it also can be a cursing because once the enemy puts his talons into you, he's reaching for your mind, but more than that, he's reaching for your soul to empty us 
and make us weak when we could be strong. And doing his bidding rather than manifesting the great love that God wants us to show toward one another. I'd like to start with Brother Kyrie. What did he do wrong? What did he do? He's searching for the knowledge of himself. He's searching to know who he is, who he belongs to. What is his root in this world? And some of you that are persecuting him are the very ones that took away from him and from us the knowledge of self. You took our language. You took our culture. You took our history. You took our minds and inserted your mind into our mind through your systems. And now God has come to lift us from this terrible condition that you have placed us in. So he saw a movie. He didn't write the movie. He wasn't the producer of the movie. He wasn't the director of the movie. Somebody told him that there was a movie titled From Hebrews to Negroes. That's an interesting title because many of our people don't know anything about being a, he a Hebrew. We know that we passed through something called Negro and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that means someone dead, lifeless, hard, neutral. We didn't name ourselves ne a Negro. They named us that because they put us in the condition that that name represents. Kyrie and Ye and all of you now that are involved in the conversation. Could you just step back a moment? And let's reason together. He saw the movie because of all of the anger and dislike and breaking apart i said let me see this movie and i and my wife and my family we watched the movie the other night it was well researched the people that did it they had a purpose the purpose of those people was to show us how we got from hebrew to Negro. As I watched that, I could see my brother. He's not thinking about hating somebody. He's thinking about learning more about himself because we are tired of being what others have made us. We must become ourselves again. And he was interested in that journey and I can listen to him and I can see him and I can see that's the journey that he's on. He's not trying to hurt the nets. He's not trying to hurt the brothers that are playing ball with him. But he is trying to be true to himself. The greatest teaching of the God who came to find us and save us. He said, accept your own and be yourself. That is what Kyrie is trying to do. Find his own, accept his own, and be himself. I heard an intelligent brother, not a foolish man, but a man that has found something that is more valuable for him than being loved as a great, fantastic ball player. So many of you, my brothers who are former players, and you've been so good at it, and you know who your managers have been, you know 
who your accountants have been and are. You know who your agents have been and are. You know who the owners of the teams that you play on, whether it's basketball, football, I don't know, whatever it is, you know who they are. And because of your greatness, they have decided that you should become rich. For hundreds of years, they didn't decide like that. For hundreds of years, they loved that you were poor and talented. So they could be your managers. They could be your agents. They could give you knowledge and give you favor. You don't see as God would love for you to see because there are forces among us that they are afraid of. They are afraid that you will discover the truth of yourself and them. They don't want you to find who you are because once you know yourself, the next step is you got to rise up from where you are to be yourself. And yourself is a noble person, a righteous person, a person that can be labeled the son of God. The Bible says of us, ye are all gods, children of the most high God. So Ye must have discovered something. He said, I am God. People that were interviewed, they said, don't, don't talk like that. Why? Because you don't want us to identify with God. It's all right for us to call each other, yo, dog, how things going, dog? But each of us, Elijah Muhammad said, when you see a black man, you are looking at God. So the honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted to give us that kind of knowledge and he made us to stop using the term nigger and call each other brother, call each other sister and learn to love for your brother what you love for yourself. And there are many black people in America and around the world that are digging at the knowledge of self. Many in America digging at the knowledge of self and sharing what they know. So Kyrie, Kyrie saw the movie and he wanted to share it with those that follow him. You know how we've been. You find a reefer and it's good to you. You call your friends and you share your reefer. They're not mad with that. Yo, dog, come on, let's, let's, let's smoke this blunt. You don't say nothing about that. But when they get knowledge and want to share knowledge, they're not talking against you. They work to make you richer as you work to make them some money too. These people aren't anti-Semitic. Every one of them ain't never done nothing against you as a Jewish person. They don't do that. Not one of those do things to purposely harm a Jewish person. The man went to a movie. He saw something that taught him more about himself and he wanted to share it. You looked at his passing on what he thought was knowledge that would sink his roots back in the soil of himself and the God. And you felt threatened by that. Why, why owners of the um, nets, what, why did you feel threatened? He didn't call you out by name. He just said he, he saw something and he put it up. You called it what? A, a, a anti-Semitic trope. The movie is almost a little over two hours. I'm sure there are things in there that you didn't like. 
But there are many things that you all have written about us that we don't like. You have been the one making us hate who we are and hate our origin in the world. You are the one that made Tarzan and told us that that's a part of us. You've done all of this to us. And we couldn't say nothing. You are the one that made a darky, a little black sambo. And you made us to see that as who we are. Can't you see that we are tired of that? So because I and others of knowledge are spreading knowledge of God, knowledge of self, knowledge of the time, and also knowledge of an enemy. Because we couldn't be in a condition like this if we're all, all of you were our friends. We have enemies. And those enemies have dropped us down in the barrel of waste. We're not around here hating you. But we tell the truth of what we know of what some of you have done to put us in the condition that we're in. Kyrie found something. I want you to say that you are sorry for saying something that is anti-Semitic. And he kept telling you, I can't be anti myself. You didn't want to hear that. You know you came from us. You know that you are not the father of humanity. We know our history and we know yours. We don't like what you're doing to Kyrie or to Ye. And when we see how you want to break him, destroy him, to keep him from saying anything that might enlighten our people. Do you know when you mess up his mind like that, he can't play. I saw the man playing ball the other day and he missed every shot, almost. He can't play with his mind in that state. And when his brother, Kevin Durant, said, I don't like none of this. He's not saying he don't like the movie. He's not liking what you're doing to a man who wasn't doing nothing against you, but searching for greater knowledge. And you decided to break him. You decided to put fear into men like Charles Bogley and LeBron James and other black men who have become rich and powerful. You wanted to say, you were saying to them as you were lynching Kyrie, you all better get the point. You all better get the message. They don't want you rising up into that knowledge that will make you a real man and not a glorified punk. I'm saying to the ADL, sir, we, we know you. And we know that we know you, and you know that we know you. Don't talk to Kyrie by himself. He can go and look at the uh, horror of the Holocaust. Why don't you come and look at the horror of what your parents have done to black people in America and throughout the world? Why don't you come and study? and repent of your evil to us, then maybe we can sit down and have a talk like civilized human beings. Yeah, Ye is not a hater. Ye is a lover. Kyrie is the same. But he wants to stand on a principle. And you see him standing, how intelligent he, are, he is, and the media keeps running at him with, why don't, why don't you say you apologize for this anti-Semitism? You did the same thing to me. I've tried to have meetings with you. Let's dialogue about this. You don't want to dialogue with me. You want to dialogue with somebody that you know you can put down because of the power you have over them by giving them a contract and money that you can take from them if they say or do anything that you don't like. 
This is the day of judgment and justice. These men don't want to be against you. These men are grateful. You brought them out of college and high school and gave them a contract. You gave them a contract because you saw their talent. Haven't they made money for you all? So now you sign them up. And then Adidas comes by and Nike comes by and gives them a lot of money that they don't see. You have them on a leash. And whenever somebody like Kyrie or Ye rise up and you don't like it, you pull the chain. So we run out and dog our own brother because he did something for a principle. You will too. Life is bigger than paper with a white man's image on it. Life is bigger than a nice house and a nice car and a lot of bling bling. Life is bigger than an Oscar. Life is bigger than a belt. Life is bigger than something that says, I am the best at what I do. I'm the most valuable player or my team won. But as a people, we are losing. We cannot afford to lose any of you. You are our kith and our kin, our flesh and our blood. And so I wanted to say something to help us to come together rather than break apart. Because it's Ye and Kari today. But what they're doing to them is to make you, who are in the good graces of them, so you think. You see what we just did? Ye lost $2 billion in a few days. You might wonder, did he really have it? He lost that much that soon? You know when you signed a contract with him. I don't know what's in the contract, but you do. So evidently, Adidas and all the companies that Brother Kanye is signed to or was signed to until Mr. Ari Emanuel told everybody just drop him. Beloved uh, brothers and sisters, look, your day is soon coming. I'm asking you stop beating each other up in the public. Stop doing that. But of course, that's what the master wants us to do. There's a slave here that's getting out of place. and Teach him a lesson. Beat him up. I'm saying to you, don't do that. Call your brother. Come and sit down with us. Tell us about this movie. I understand it, Brother Shaq. Keel O'Neill, put it up in his theater. Go see it. You don't want to read secret relationship with blacks and Jews that we uh, financed, we researched. Yes, and you told me when we sat down. We had dinner together in the home of the Jewish rabbi. I went and others went. I brought some of my people and there were two rabbis. There was Irv Kupsinet, great reporter for the Chicago uh, Sun-Times. And after we had a beautiful dinner together, we, we looked like we were gonna be on a page together where the controversy could stop. But the rabbi said to me, this is this love fest that is near the end of the dinner. 
But then he reached in his pocket and pulled out an envelope and said, but this is tough love. We want something from you. And they said, minister, we have to watch you over a protracted time to make sure that you've changed. Then we had just put out the first volume of the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. And you all told me, we want you to renounce this book. Because it's a great calumny against the Jewish people. You said that to me. You said to me, nobody that is deemed an enemy to the Jewish people is ever written up well in history. You know you control much of the publishing industry. So if you write the books, your people are heavily placed in the media. So when you all get ready to dog us out, you call those in that you pay. Then you told me that if I did all the things that you all asked me to do, you would clean up my image. You knew you dirtied it, but I'm not gonna beg and bow to you to clean up my image. God is sufficient for me. And God is sufficient for Kyrie and Ye. And God is sufficient for everyone who has been made a millionaire a multimillionaire, a billionaire. And then you call your man at Forbes and tell them, put it in the book, that there's a new billionaire black kid on the block. There's Miss Oprah, one of the most beautiful women you could ever have as a friend. But now she has something to lose if she's not careful. Careful means you have to guard your mouth. So you used to be able to open it. I'm going to do that again. You used to be able to open it. Now when they pull that chain, now you can't find your voice. You're afraid. When fear grips you because you think you're going to lose something that's dear to you so you don't want to venture out because you're afraid. I say this, dear beloved, resist the devil and he will flee from you. To resist means to withstand the action or the effect of. Because if you stand and fight with truth and unity, you'll never lose even what you've got. They don't want to be shown up. They want to put fear into you. And they do have power to hurt us. And God has plenty of power to hurt them. So I think I'll stop now. But if you want our brothers to come and sit with your rabbis and visit the Holocaust Museum, why not let one of our scholars come and sit with them? Because we know the Torah, by God's grace. We know the Talmud. And we know you and your history. Leave our people alone. Leave Kyrie alone. Step back and see what you're unleashing. Stephen A, the other day, he didn't take up with Kyrie in the movie, but he took up that you took it too far. Some others say you buck breaking because you still 
are an old wicked slave master. Yes, sir. Sing for me, nigga. Don't talk dribble, dribble. But we tired. We don't mind dribbling for you if you respect us for who we are. We haven't asked you for nothing more than a decent paycheck for the work that we do to make you a multimillionaire and a billionaire. Leave our brothers alone. Don't try to use what you're doing to Ye and Kanye. Ye and Kyrie, pardon me. So you can keep a muzzle on our great basketball players that have a big contract with you. When they reached in their pocket and showed me a, a white envelope with the things they wanted me to do if I would have their friendship. And when they say, we're gonna watch you for a protracted period of time. See, we need to watch them for a protracted period of time because we have never done to you and your people what you and your people have done to us. We don't need to go see the Holocaust. We feel your pain because we're really human beings. You don't feel ours. Because to you, a thousand blacks ain't worth the fingernail of a Jewish man. I've read these things. Yes, sir. You wanna have a real good dialogue so we can start afresh and anew? Cause the old way is not going to work. I told the, the rabbi and Irv Kupsinet, two or three rabbis, Irv Kupsinet, They said, well, you've got your truth and we got ours. I said, it's not about your truth or my truth. It's about what is the truth. If we can agree on the truth, we can build a better relationship. Now, uh, I think we should watch you for a protracted period of time before we admit you into our heart as a friend. What about that one? You want my brother to go out and denounce a movie that is teaching knowledge of self? Why don't you call the producer of that, the writer of that, and make them say that what they did is a lie? It's still in the movie. Don't pick on my brother. You want to fight we can entertain you we're all born to die and at some point i don't give a skip how powerful you are like i said to one of your brothers who had me and i visited him in his uh penthouse apartment on fifth avenue and he offered me a drink i said sir i, I I don't drink. He said, well, you, you drink orange juice? I said, yes. He said, that's me. You listen to music? I said, of course. He said, that's me. Do you go to the movies? Of course, occasionally. He said, that's me. I said, sir, I know you're a powerful man. I said, but the God I serve, when it's your time to get out of here, neither your money or your power can keep you alive on this earth one fraction of a second after the decree of death is in for you. So who's really powerful? I'm not bowing to you. I bow to God. And I think we're going to get to that point where our people are not going to bow no more. We'll soon get to that point where your money don't mean to us what it mean to you. 
when life don't mean more to us than the principles of truth upon which we stand. You're going to meet that kind of black person. You're meeting them now. And more and more, you are making them by what you're trying to do to Ye, what you've done to Ye, and what you're trying to make Kyrie do to get back friendship with you that you never give him. Ain't no forgiveness in you. It's never enough. He said, I apologize for the hurt that my going to that movie and advising others to check it out. It may hurt. That ain't far enough. You did the same to others. That's not far enough. We don't like your apology. Tell me something. How many of you would come and sit down and apologize to us for the transatlantic slave trade? You come now. Bring your wife and your children and tell us you're sorry for killing us, raping us, castrating us, and enslaving us, and making us chattel. Will you come and apologize? Our people can be like you. It ain't enough. See, if we tell you when you apologize, it's not enough. Oh, you trying to pimp us and hustle. No, reparation ain't pimping. Reparation is what we deserve for the pain, pain and anguish that you have caused us to suffer. No, no, no. But you won't do that. You won't do justice by us. That's why judgment is on you now. That's why you can't live a day without another calamity. And they're not going to stop. It's going to get harder and harder because the God of justice has claimed us, Kyrie and Ye, and Durant, and Barkley, and Shaq. We belong to God, not you. Don't try to use us against each other. If they want to talk to any of you, we'll go with you. You bring your rabbis. You bring your scholars. And I told him when we look at our book that we wrote, we only quoted your scholars, your historians, your uh, rabbis. So when they asked me to condemn uh, our book, I said, oh, if it's all lies, I certainly will condemn it. But we only quoted your people. So when you come out and call everyone that we quoted a liar and an anti-Semite, all right, then I'll condemn the book. But you're not going to do that. When I told you at the end, I want to be your friend. That's why I'm sitting in your house, eating your food and inviting you to my house. And we prepared food for you. I would like to get along with you. And so would Ye and so would Kyrie. But you can't abuse them. Because you promised them wealth and nearness to white power. I'd like to close this little talk. You... Uh, should be desirous of having making peace with us don't try to buckle us under because of all your power God can take it away from you in the twinkling of an eye and he's about to do that you can come against me as I said with all the force and power of what you have and I will stand on the truth that I was taught and stand with God and as long as I stand on truth and stand with God I will be the winner and so will Ye and so will Kyrie and so will any of us who want truth in our lives and will fight for truth 
May Allah bless you. That listen, may Allah comfort you. May Allah give you strength to stand for truth and righteousness and unity. I close with this scriptural verse. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. To resist means to withstand. For nearly 40 years, I have withstood you. Everything you've said and done to hurt me and those with me, I'm here. I've withstood the action and the effect. And I remain undamaged or unaffected by what you do. You know, if I live, I'll soon be 90. You can't wait for me to die. But I can't die until Allah says so, not you. So as long as I'm alive, I'm not going to sit by and let you do what you're trying to do to our people. And we say nothing. Thank you to all the brothers and sisters on social media who are standing up like the soldiers that they are. I just ask that you remember our brothers who are caught in the strange net. Why not let us release them? Don't beat them up. Let's release them from the prison of fear and ignorance. And you'll have all of them standing together. Then we all can pool our resources and be thankful for what we've been blessed to get by our association with members of the Jewish community. But we're not going to let you destroy us. We're not going to let you turn us into what will make us ashamed of ourselves. Let us unite, brothers and sisters. Let us declare our oneness with God first and our oneness with each other as long as we are in the right. And if we drift and we are not in the right, we are family. Bring our people back to the table and straighten us out. May Allah bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank Allah for putting that spirit in me as I greet you in peace. And the love and favor of God. I am your brother. And I love you more than life. I want to see us free. Come on, brothers and sisters. Let's stop nibbling at each other to the joy of an enemy. And let us confront with truth. And then clasp hands in the unity of the brotherhood. And watch God bless us to keep on growing and going up. But never let money be your God. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. What's up? What's up? Man, that was powerful, 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 powerful. And I got to go. I got to do this. Next. Nasty. Nasty. <laughs> oh, don't go. Yeah, one more time. So much to unpack. So much to unpack. I did take some notes. I want to get off here. So let me kind of go through my notes really quick. First one, division can't afford. We can't afford to be divided based on ignorance. I think uh, to his point, instead of condemning Kyrie, watch the movie and then have a conversation with him one on one. Talk about it. He said, we should not be afraid to have these conversations in our homes, on the telephone, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we definitely shouldn't be addressing things in the media, especially, uh, he mentioned individuals, Shaq, Barkley, LeBron. I have that conversation with Kyrie. Um, definitely, we got to do more showing love to one another. 
he talked about, you know, when he, he actually sat down and watched the movie and said, you know, after he watched, he said, you know, what did Kyrie really do wrong? He stressed the fact that he can't be anti-Semite when he's a Semite. He, he expressed, um, not, he apologized if he did offend anyone. Uh, but for the most part, what did he do wrong by trying to study his history and learn who he is? They talked about the knowledge of self. That is a very powerful phrase. If you've never heard that phrase, get familiar with it. You know, learn who you are. Some For some, it takes learning the history, understanding the heritage, understanding the things that will lie to them. Uh, but you got to, I think that's the purpose for all of us, is to uh, gain that knowledge of self. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't even make the attempt to try to get to that level. Um, he was just mentioning, you know, obviously, like I said, you got to discover your origin for some people. That's how they reach that level to uh, get to a place of knowledge yourself. Um, we did not name ourselves a Negro. He said our history was taken from us and given to us at the same time. So it's very important as we do discover what happened that we're able to learn and process and deal with it and share, share the information because it's important for all of us to understand that. I mean, since Kyrie shared this book, since she made comments, it's opened my eyes to a lot of different things. It's put me in a position to read certain books that I wouldn't have typically read on my own. So it's important for us to understand what's what, especially when it's dealing with our origin. Um, he, he basically stressed, as I've stressed on shows, Kyrie's not trying to hurt anyone. And I would agree with that. Everything I've heard, everything I've, I've read, all the interviews, it's not the clips, uh, but the actual total interviews, I never saw any hate in Kyrie's heart. And I think that we have to accept and embrace that. Um, he said a very powerful phrase. He said, accept your own and be yourself. That is the goal and objective for us to learn who we are, be ourselves. So uh, he mentioned they are afraid you will discover who you are and who they are. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the past is the past. And as I mentioned on my reparation show, if you made a mistake, own up to it, deal with it, apologize for it. But unfortunately, it's like they don't want us to really know the truth because then they know what they got to do to make amends or make or make peace with the things that they did. He talked a little bit about the slave, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Like, study these things. When you study these, you're like, what the heck? You know, they try to, I think they try to discredit it sometimes, putting it in the slave movies and making it seem like, yeah, that's that those things happen. But sometimes you can go a little deeper and you're like, what the heck? And these same people, they're afforded the opportunities that, that they have today because they earn so much on our backs and our history. A lot of people say, well, my parents weren't a slave. Nah, nah, homes, you can't look at it like that. You got to understand wealth was built on our backs. So when you start to really, really embrace the past and understand what really went on from an economics perspective, not just the imagery, not just this is, you know, what happened and we'll get our rewards in this next life. Nah, homes, nah, you got to look at it. And you got to really embrace the economic impact of that, th those different things. So once you discover your true origin and you know, like he said, who you are, who they are, it's going to make you approach things a lot differently. Um, True self is knowing that you are a God. I love the statement when he says, when you see a black man, you are looking at a God. And it's crazy how they did beat up Kanye when he said, I am a God. And I think when he first said it and I first heard it, I didn't totally understand it. But then over time, I said, OK, I get it. I get it. We have to. I think the goal for a lot of us is to enact in and understand the power within, understand the God within you. So I just thought that that statement was extremely powerful. Um, we all help each other. Uh, I make you money and you make even more of us. He was just talking about, you know, the, 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 we like to say that these owners make people like Kyrie rich, right? But the reality is they're paying them an amount because they're going to make even more money off of the backs of Kyrie. So it's like, yeah, it's always like people want to throw athletes that speak out under the bus. You're making all this money. You should be quiet. No, why, why can't I speak up? I'm, yeah, I'm making money, 
because I'm actually providing entertainment that is making these owners and so it's providing so many jobs for so many people and making these owners so much money, so much more money. So just because I'm signed under this contract and I'm making this, this, this bread that I can't speak my, my truth and I can't empower my people. Nah, homes. That's, that's not right. Um, and, and yeah, just kind of going to the part with, with Kanye over and over again, just talking about the fact that, uh, when he talks about the contract parts, like, no, Ye is bringing up the contract parts because at the end of the day, we're going to see who has the real power. And once we understand who has the real power, we'll start beating up the entertainers and the athletes and we'll start saying, OK, how can I get that power? How can that power shift to us so we can be instead of being acts and entertainment, we could be owners. And that's the goal. That's how we're going to ultimately get out of all of this shit that we're in. It's all about economics, not all about economics, but a big part of it is economics. Um, uh, Minister Farrakhan talks about the fact that instead of them, you know, Kyrie apologized. Hey, I apologize if I offended anyone. But for them, they won't accept an apology. They want to break them. And they want to, you know, the term that keeps being used around buck breaking, they want to break them. So in essence, he his voice becomes muted and he can't enlighten the people. But that definitely, I don't think that's happening this, this time around, in my opinion, because one, I don't think Kyrie's going to break, uh, I don't think he's going to uh, let down. And then you have people like the Minister Farrakhan that has his back. You have people like me, you have people all over YouTube, all over the internet that's going to speak out in support of what they're seeing. And we're tired of it. So um, I love the part when he talked about uh, don't be a glorified punk. He was referring to a lot of the the athletes and the media speaking down on Kyrie. You know, they gave you that money. They gave you the riches and that 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 wealth. And instead of you being able to speak up and speak out, you become a glorified punk. And you don't want to be that. Nah, home. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be that. Um, he talked a little bit about with the yay part, you know, how you lose $2 billion in a few days. And he just talked about they get a lot of money they don't see. As soon as they don't do what you want them to do, they pull the chain. And he said, life is bigger than green. It's bigger than the money. Uh, so I always, once again, I contemplate doing shows, writing. I wrote posts about you could be rich and a slave at the same time. They give you these contracts. And once you're in that contract, you will make your money, you will be praised as long as you do what we want you to do. But as soon as you get out of line, pow, pow, but they pull that chain and it's done. And I think that we got to start thinking or approaching it a little bit differently. Yeah, I want to get in a better situation, but I have to do it on my terms because at the end of the day, if you don't, then they always have control over you. So even though you might be viewed upon as a successful person or have wealth, the reality is if you choose to stand on your own or speak out or be your own person, then they could take it from you. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too big. Stop beating. Yeah. He just, I, I think one of the biggest points of, uh, Ms. Minister Farrakhan's discussion or, or talk is that we cannot, we got to stop beating each other up in the media, beating each other up for them folks, because at the end of the day, um, you can easily call that man, have a conversation. You can, I, I, I truly believe most of the people that spoke out never, ever watched the movie, never had a conversation with Kyrie. Kyrie, what made you compelled to uh, post that, that video? The first thing they're going to say, yeah, we don't believe in anti-Semitic. I mean, I've been reading the book. I haven't got to an anti-Semitic part yet. I didn't watch the film. Like I said, I'm going to read the book first before I watch the film, but I haven't seen it yet. Minister Farrakhan said he watched. He said, yeah, I know there's some things you may not like, but he didn't really state that there were any anti-Semitic points of views or discussion topics. So I don't know. It's just interesting that LeBron could come out and say, I don't agree with this when I read the book. Minister Farrakhan, others I've seen on Twitter and on the internet said they didn't see anything. So how are you so can strongly come out and say, I, uh, I condemn, you know, anyone that 
does anything anti-Semitic. So, um, yeah, he definitely talked about Shaq, Barkley, LeBron. Call that man. Don't put it in the media. Don't beat each other up. Uh, he talked a little bit about butt breaking. I talked about that. I love the part about Oprah. Um, and I've always wondered, even when I was a kid growing up, why don't these celebrities, why don't these people I look up to at the time, I don't, you know, at the time I'm like, why don't they say something? Why don't they say something? And over time I realized why, but it was just very enlightening to hear Minister Farrakhan say it, like they can't, they can't. They take these deals, they, they're they given this status, and at that point they're not going to say anything so they can protect what they got, what they got. So, But I love when he said, you can't even open it. Open it. That was that was classic. That was classic. Um, he talked about, yeah, I mean, in rebelling and fighting back, they have the power to hurt you, to hurt us. But if you believe in God and the higher being, he has more power. And I truly believe that. He mentioned he brought up Stephen A. I was interested. I was I was definitely interested. Um Surprise! I'm sorry, not interested. Surprise! He brought up Stephen A. He mentioned that Stephen Stephen A., who's been extremely critical of Kyrie, actually spoke up for Kyrie in the sense that they um, he thought that they were being a little bit too harsh and doing too much. So I thought that was interesting because Kyrie has been the main person attacking uh, Kyrie Irving. All in all, he said, "You know what is the truth." The conversation you have with the Jews, you know, they have their truth, we have our truth, but what is the one truth? What is the truth? Let's have that discussion. Let's get to the bottom line so we can start to be friends and we can sit at each other home and we can get past the point of you're right, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong, that type of thing. So we need to get to what is the truth. The movie is about finding knowledge itself. Once again, I'm excited when I get the chance to watch right now. The book is Really long and really good, and I'm focused on that at the moment. I talked about the apology is not enough. They must humiliate you. He brought, he brought up reparations. I just did the show on reparations. And said, it's what we deserve. You won't do justice by us. Like I said, when you talk about the economics, you talk about a lot of different things. Reparations is not a joke. It's a real thing, and it should happen sooner versus later. We belong to God, not you. Stop trying to use that us against us. Talking once again about the black celebrities and the media. You know, keep that thing in house. Talk to each other. You don't have to do that. You don't have to call a person an idiot because they're trying to find out their origin. I still, I'm, I still have a problem with Barkley and Shaq on that. That, that was, and LeBron. That was just uncalled for on all three fronts. Like, come on, guys. Like. Damn, you ain't even have a conversation or even dig a little deep and watch the movie and 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 then come up with a narrative of a point of, of, of reference in terms of what he did. You just went with what everybody else said and you tried to throw that man under the bus. Nearness to white power. He was talking more about contracts, the fact that they give us this money, they sprinkle this, but life is bigger than that. He focused on, he ended it with stand for truth, righteousness, and unity. And we need to release from fear and ignorance and unite and understand that we all got to be in this together for things to change, for things to change for the better. So that's it. Whew. That was amazing. Like I said, I was at the gym. I was putting it, pushing it up. I heard one part and I said, man, I got to go home. I got to go and I got to react to this because this is powerful. I just love when Minister Farrakhan talks, I think. And I think this is so relevant because you have two young lions, Ye and Kyrie, risking it all. Not risking it all, but risking a lot to enlighten our people. And then you have Minister Farrakhan coming in like, yes, I got your back. And that's what it's about. So definitely, definitely let me know your thoughts. I'm sorry. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. I would love to hear your comments. What do you think was Minister Farrakhan right, wrong? What are you willing to do in this fight? What are you willing to do? 
Are you scared of company policy? Are you scared to speak up because the powers that be? I think that we do. We got to let that fear go and we got to step up because at the end of the day, it's been going on too long. And I think enough is enough. People are tired and we want to see change. We want to see change for the better. Our kids depending on it. Our kids' kids are depending on it. And it won't happen unless we do something now. So with that being said, out. Peace. <laughs>